Picture this, the sun on your face, the sand between your toes, and the thrill of adventure pulsing through your veins. But wait, there's a twist. You're not just lounging on a tropical beach. You're also crushing it in your career. Intrigued? Stay tuned, because I'm about to show you how to turn your wanderlust dreams into a reality, all while keeping your job running smoothly. I know there are hundreds of thousands of people who want to travel more. In years of the past, travel was much more inaccessible, but today I truly feel that more and more people can travel and experience this world of ours and see things firsthand. However, in certain countries, the standards for work continue to grow. And I am a big believer that work is important. I actually do find a career is part of my passion and I want to be successful there, but it does not hold me back from my personal ambitions of also traveling and experiencing the world. And I don't think it should hold you back either. And so with that said, I want to dispel any belief that you might feel that traveling while working is a bad thing. Prior in the US, the standard for vacation times is two weeks or less. Some better jobs might give you up to four weeks and as you get more prestige, you'll be very fortunate to get up to two months. And still, that is not that much time to explore the world, especially if you have a family. So how do you balance it all out, especially early in your career? I will have to say, it's important to work up to being able to travel while working. And so before I started getting into this, I was kind of a workaholic and I had burnt out on my fair share of jobs. I would always go deep and try to become the most valuable and skilled person around. Now I've done this in several different careers and now I'm an engineer that works with technology, which has ultimately afforded me the ability to work on a computer and I can work remotely if I wanted. And so I definitely leveraged it and I've worked myself into the position. I didn't always have this, especially right out of college. I actually have several bachelor's degrees because when I originally graduated college, I thought I wanted to have a in-person and physical job and I ultimately decided you know that wasn't the future for me and i wanted to travel more so i opened the doors to becoming an engineer later in my life and with every step of my career growth i dove deep whenever i had a new job and i became a valuable person before i started to travel more it's kind of like driving a car when you start learning how to drive a car there's a lot of things to learn. There's a lot of details and they're overwhelming at first. But as you start growing accustomed to driving a car, you start seeing that the details become more automated. And now you can focus on more finer skills and points in that career path and automate a lot more of it. And it's when you have a strong foundation at your job is when you can start opening the doors to trying to improve certain things and aspects of that job, as well as exploring, being efficient, working remotely and on travel. So ultimately, I kind of had a plan and an ambition, and this drove me through numerous years. And I worked up to the point where I can slowly start traveling more. And now I am fairly comfortable with traveling quite frequently. So don't jump into it. You have to drive the car, get used to driving the car, be aware that you have to learn a lot of things, reduce the chaos. And when you start feeling comfortable at the wheel of the car and ready to start trying to do some specialized skills with the car, then you're at a point where you can start exploring this remoteness. And with that, working remote, I want to stress, is harder than working normally. You will stress you and it'll put a lot of tension on you in comparison than just getting up at the nine to five and going to the office every day. It's going to be a lot harder because there's a lot more unknowns with travel and those could potentially throw a wrench into your work schedule. And you don't want that because you want to be a valuable person and you want to do well at your job. So mitigating those risks while on travel is also important in making sure that you can show up and give your 110% at your job every single day. Once you start traveling, 
It's important to think of your job as being the most important thing in travel secondary. Travel is something you're pursuing and you want to make sure that you can accommodate everything your job needs while traveling. With that frame of mind, you will make sure that you don't impede your career progress and it's still an important thing. So let's talk about how to maximize that productivity on the road. Starting off with one of my more successful trips where I spent two months in China working in Puget Sound time. Now, you're probably wondering how I made that work. Did I tell my whole team that I'm going to be working different hours for two months in a leadership role? That probably won't work out. It will probably impede your progress in your career growth. Maybe not for everyone, but I will say it's going to put hardship on your team because it'll make communication harder. What I ended up doing is trying to figure out how I can travel and make it work in a way that I can see my wife, her family, and enjoy China for two months with little impact to my job. When we first arrived, I remember how jet lag. So I had to think about how to make this work. One, because of the offset in hours, I wanted to make sure that I could work the same hours as my coworkers, the core business hours. And so noting what that would be, that puts in where I was going to be working at about starting at 10 p.m. to about 8 a.m. were kind of around the range of when I needed to start work. Of course, I tried to keep it locked to about eight hours, but give or take one hour and also trying to catch up with certain things was the core hours I set aside for work. And also, it's good to buffer an hour before and after, as I've found, just in case you're running late and you can still make it on time and have a decent buffer time. With those core hours in mind, I remember how jet lagged I was when I arrived there and tried to make this work on the first day. It's not easy, especially maybe the first four to five days, you have to get in the rhythm. Of course, this is also graveyard, which also stresses your body out in terms of trying to change your sleep schedule. I did not say it's easy, but if with a will and a mindset, you will be able to power through and make it work. And I've done it numerous times now, so I know it can be done. So maybe it gives me some confidence that I can make this work. So you can practice doing this without having to travel to China and try to change your sleep schedule in smaller trips to experiment. When I arrived, of course, I needed to try and take an energy drink or some coffee as a handicap for adjusting to the sleep schedule. But after some time going to bed at a regular time and adjusting slowly up to that point to minimize the jet lag, and I was able to mostly maintain my efficiency with my job and my focus. But I still to this day won't say is easy and I never looked forward to this kind of thing. It's doable and I know it can work for you with some practice. So with that said, how you can maximize your productivity is by establishing a consistent work routine and keeping to that schedule even while on travel and trying to make sure you match your work time with your co-workers time to maximize that productivity. Believe me, I've seen it before where people travel to Asia or different time zones and try to continue to work the nine to five at different time zones. And I will say it's always noticeable. Some teams may be more tolerant of it than others, but it will be noticeable. And usually the team will be thankful to have you back in their time zone. And so this is kind of going against my tips here in terms of making sure you're maximizing your efficiency with your team. You want it to be as seamless as possible and the team hardly even notice that you're where you're at because your efficiency has not diminished. Further, have dedicated work hours. Know what those hours are. Give yourself that hour before and after to ensure you have that focus and that buffer time for ensuring you're working during those hours. Stay disciplined with your work hours. Dedicate those work hours for work and nothing else. And then when you're off those work hours, then you can go and enjoy where you're at and have that separation of work and life balance to avoid burnout. And of course, you have to be vigilant in embracing the creativity and flexibility of the work environment. Being on travel, you will find that there's all sorts of things that can go wrong and you have to be a little flexible sometimes in finding a solution to make sure that you can work efficiently and not make mistakes where you lose productivity on your job. Of course, all this comes with experience 
And the more you do it, the more confidence you get and the more mistakes and things you experience that will help you power through when things go wrong and you can still be productive. Remember, you want to make sure you have a plan to always protect your work time so that it's isolated and it doesn't affect your employer at all because they really just want to make sure you're producing and as long as you're making sure you're producing, then you can enjoy other things as well in your off hours. Now it's important to note, now going back to the start of this video, when you're standing on that beach with the wind blowing your hair and the sunset in the distance and needing to start working an hour, you will be battling energy levels. And if you're already battling energy levels back at home, working a normal job while you're trying to learn how to drive, you will find it's gonna be a lot harder. So let me tell you about another successful trip I've done and it was a month in Turkey where we were working in the evenings and had the daytime free. If I recall right, we started work around 6 p.m. and would end work around 2 or 3 a.m. and would wake up around 8 or 9 a.m. Now you're probably wondering, we were not getting enough sleep. And so that is probably true. We would often have to do split sleep schedules and this is much more advanced. We would find ways of taking cat naps here and there. Obviously, when you're traveling, there is going to be a transportation cost of getting from point A to point B, wherever you're going to, and so you can be on a bus, you can rent a private driver, you can do all sorts of things. And during those times, you can kind of plan naps is kind of what we ended up doing. And we did not take a single day off for 30 days. On weekends, we would have a jam-packed schedule because we wouldn't have to work. And during the weekdays of the work days, we would always make sure we had that appropriate time set aside and we would always make it back to work in time. Now, by no means is that easy. And it's going to take a lot to work up to this point, but we did not start with this thing. And in fact, we're still even starting to try doing harder and harder things. And so it's a progression system where you start doing just a little bit and you continue to do harder and harder stuff to get used to it. And this gives you the experience and the confidence of doing harder things. It doesn't always need to be an international trip. It could be a weekend trip local. It can be maybe a couple time zones away from you. And then you can work across those more international trips where the stakes are larger and there's much more culture shock. And you will find that there are things where you need to plan days off. Such as when we were in Cappadocia in Turkey, we wanted to do a hot air balloon and that was super early. And so we decided to take the night off before because we just couldn't do that little amount of sleep. It was planned. We wanted to do this hot air balloon. We knew which day it was gonna be. I took the day off of work and notified my coworkers, no problem. You will always have days off. You will have appointments and in this particular case, I wanted a day off so that I can do the hot air balloon vacation day. No problem. Done. As long as you provide your team with enough notice, it doesn't affect anything. And of course, this just goes into your diligence of planning and knowing what you want to do. Which, if you are having trouble with that, I do have a video I'd love to recommend to you. Watch next and I'll link it above. And on top of that, just managing your energy levels, making sure you're eating right, having a good balanced nutrition, trying to maximize your sleep. Of course, with what we were doing, it's much more advanced, a split sleep schedule. However, we were still getting the sleep we needed and having an appropriate fitness level to accommodate. Getting 10,000 steps was no problem for a day for us. We were walking all the time. And sometimes I would even exercise on some of those days as well. So having high energy levels is super important, which I also have a video that if you're interested, you can check it out. So an important takeaway from all this is making sure you're adjusting your sleep schedule appropriately and maximizing your sleep. You have to have good, efficient sleep to be able to make this work. Further, in talking about sleep, you shouldn't just jump into travel where you have to start working graveyard shift. I would recommend highly just getting used to working somewhere one day outside of work, away from your normal office environment and see how you do and really grade yourself on your efficiency and able to get stuff done. Really try hard to work harder 
and more efficiently than if you were, were in office. If anything, you want to be doing better than you normally do. So when you are suffering some hardships while travel, you can still be productive. Do it for one day, then maybe two days, then maybe a week, and then maybe try a couple time zones over. And then you can start trying to explore small trips internationally, but make sure that they're safe and don't make them too long so that if things are going wrong, you can make it back and start recovering and evaluate what went wrong and what you have to improve. You make small steps and build the experience before you jump into the deep end. Don't go and just plan a long trip out of the blue and expect it to work out. You have to have the experience and work up to this point of being able to take those longer trips. Speaking of which, I never just buy a one-way trip to somewhere and wing it. That just sounds like a recipe for disaster. As much experience as I've had up to this point, I know I must plan ahead. Now, if you're not much of a planner, really start thinking otherwise, because this is not going to work in the long term. You're going to have a much harder time with things if you don't plan your trips. Because of that meticulous planning, you might think it takes some adventure out of it, but I guarantee that meticulous planning of the trip will ensure you're able to be productive at your job, which is still what I mentioned to be your priority number one. And this is going to allow you to accelerate your career and still be able to travel. Also try to avoid eating junk food. Try to avoid eating cheap food. Have a decent balance to what you're eating and generally this will keep your nutrition levels up. Avoid skipping meals because you'll need the energy, especially working as hard as you are with trying to make this work and travel work. You're gonna be burning lots of calories of all the moving you're gonna be doing. And speaking of moving, you have to improve your fitness to be able to do well. I'm a big believer in training before your trip. The trip should be easy for your level of fitness. So when you're at home, you should be training harder than the fitness you need for your trip. So if you're just walking around Rome and seeing the city, you really don't need to be that fit, but you probably need to at least be able to walk 15 to 20,000 steps in a day for a couple weeks. So you can start practicing doing that at home. If I were to walk 20,000 steps every single day, how do I feel? And if you're doing that, might as well do 25,000 steps at home. So 20,000 is a little bit easier than what you've been training for. So that makes that Rome trip less than what you've been training for at home and you'll be able to crush it. No problem because you've been training harder than what you need. And that's the mindset you should have for the whole thing. And of course, listen to your body. If you are burning out and you are having a hard time and you still want to make it work, just take a day off. Treat it like I'm just going to work today and I'm going to chill. I'm going to walk around the city, have a nice dinner, and I'm not going to do anything too exhausting because I need that day off to recuperate. And that's okay. It prevents that burnout and you can always pick it up the next day. It's lessons you can learn. Ideally, if you've been training and practicing well, you'll be able to hold the energy level through the whole trip. Maybe if you did hit that burnout and you need to take some day off, that just indicates something went wrong and it's something to be learned from. Of course, don't be ashamed of it. It's going to happen to everyone. But there is something there to learn and something from for you to grow from. And that growth is going to enable your next trip to be even better. And that's how you start building this cycle of starting from just a day trip to two days and so forth and getting to the point where you can spend months on trips and nobody even realizes that you're on a trip. They all forget because after like honestly you tell everyone like a week or two if your efficiency hasn't diminished at work no one's gonna notice you're on a trip especially if you're normally working remote anyway. Traveling more is a passion of mine and while I am not traveling full-time I am able to meet that work and life balance and enjoy my career while traveling. And I know you can too. This world is opening up and it's ready for more people to be embracing this digital nomad life. I'm not quite living in other countries, but I am traveling frequently enough that I feel I could be. And if you want to embrace more of this digital nomad life and make sure that your efficiency with working full time and travel does not get impeded, I have a whole bunch more tips that are essential for your success in this next video here. Check it out and happy travels.